is her home, and women cannot be a good entrepreneur, so lack of self-confidence and um, lack of role models uh, usually put barriers to be a woman as, an as a good entrepreneur, and also a, a lack of um, child care and elderly care is the main problem in Turkey. So because of all these problems, there, we are still 8% in the Turkey, very, very low compared to the population and everything. So, uh, but the advantage, maybe uh, I don't want to be uh, so much pessimistic about this, but also we have some advantages, in, uh, not in Turkey, but all over the world as a woman entrepreneur. We are multitasking people, usually women. Um, we do cooking, uh, we clean the houses, we make shopping, we, we are taking care of the children, um, we are planning for the family, so we make all the things at the same time. This, is, this has to be, uh, all the entrepreneurs have to be multitasking. So this is the reason why if a woman is an entrepreneur, they are always more successful than men. And uh, higher EQs, uh, we are more creative, more, we are more passionate. Uh, we are more adaptable to, to every situation rather than men. And more social networking. Though all of those make us more uh, successful entrepreneurs. There are some, uh, uh, maybe I will just tell at the uh, last question maybe, but I want to tell because I have still time. There are very good uh, practices, best practices in the world. For example, in US, um, there is a program called Small Owned Business, Small, sorry, Small Owned, Small, um, called Women Owned Small Business Federal Contract Program. Mm. According to this, 5% of US federal contracts are designed to go to the women owned small businesses in order to make the women and women's entry into male dominant sectors. And after this program, it was a very successful program and the, the uh, entrepreneurship rates increased with 9% in the United States. So with those kind of programs, also in Turkey maybe, I, I think that our uh, entrepreneurship, human entrepreneurship rate will uh, increase a lot. Thank you so much. Thank you, Gamzen. I hope with all the advantages that uh, she's shared with us, you will be more encouraging of um, potential women entrepreneurs in your social networks okay, and families. You. Our next speaker is Dr. Shaika Almaskari, the chairwoman of Almaskari Holding, a powerful conglomerate of numerous multinational firms across oil and gas, renewable energy, power generation, defense and security, ICT and finance sectors. Dr. Shaika is possibly the first Arab woman to run such a large group of companies. She's a member of several NGOs as, and has won numerous international awards, including Asia Pacific Woman Entrepreneur of the Year. However, most notably, recently she's been knighted by the Swedish king in the order of the Polar Star member first class, dating from 370 years, highest honor given to any foreign national in Sweden. Can I please have a round of applause for that? <laughs> Not only that, Dr. Shaika last month also received the honorary shield from United Arab Emirates for high service to the nation and abroad. She's known as the mother of the nation. Dr. Sheikha, welcome. Yeah. I'm really humbled uh, by you know, reading the backgrounds and the stories of the, the panelists today, um, and uh, certainly you're one of them. Um, I would like to ask you what it feels like being such a strong businesswoman in a mainly male-dominated Arab business world. 
And could you please also share with us um, about the Arab International Women's Forum? There is a mic. Is, is there no mic? Yeah. If you just press the button here, please. I think it's on. Okay. I'll repeat the question. Uh, what is it like being a leading businesswoman in a mainly male-dominated Arab business world? And um, also about the Arab International Women's Forum, please. First of all, I'd like to thank ICP, UIP for this uh, opportunity to meet people from all over the world. Are you able to hear, Ms. Shaika? Could you please bring the mic a little closer? Yeah. Thank you. Uh, I, thank, I thank this organization. The name is outstanding, and usually the attendance is very good, and I'm honored to be part of this organization, High Advisory Board. Great, great executives, and it's a platform, actually, of meeting great people from all over the world. As far as being a woman in the Arab and Muslim world, the question itself has a preconception that difficulties of doing business are gender-based. Actually, the success rate for men failing in business is less than women. It just depends on the personality and the drive and the conviction that we have. I did not create our organization. I inherited a very old organization and I was committed to continue the legacy of my family. I, was, I never thought I would be a business person. I was just having, I'm a, I'm a scientist, I liked my job. And I was not, the minute I came back from overseas, from the United States, I was given a big job. We didn't have national oil company, but we had petroleum company. And I got the job, no discrimination at all. In my country, we do not discriminate between men and women. I got educated as well as my brothers. As a matter of fact, United Arab Emirates, frankly, is an example to the world. In our inclusive, gender inclusive society, we have 27 young ladies in our cabinet as ministers. 27%, almost 30%. We have a minister of happiness. We have minister of tolerance, a woman. Minister of international cooperation is a woman. Minister of community affairs is a woman and it's just up to our own capabilities. I had no extra wings or no, no extra wisdom. I inherited an oil company and I was welcomed immediately by the huge oil crisis. Those days, the difference between $16 a barrel to $9 a barrel was absolutely Devastating, but I decided I have. I, I, all my staff are my family. I called them, I said, look, I, I know nothing about business, but I don't want to let our legacy down. Help me, all my staff, even the, the cleaners, even the drivers. And they gave me the ideas. And we diversified from one big, oil company, the oil, oil services, and trading in petroleum, and we went. We do catering company, 
for the oil companies. We did facility management for the oil companies. Then we look, they needed health care. We established Tricon Medical Services to provide health care. In 10 years, I had already 10 really dynamic companies. In 10 years, actually, I had 20 with companies with multinational partnerships. Why? Because I realized in which we, we actually, all over the world, human beings have a propensity over, over evaluating our own capabilities. I realized there was no way I can be jack of all trades. But the most important factor in business and in life is our reputation for governance, for good global citizenship, and for own capabilities. So I went to Portugal. We created with the Portuguese government 50-50 a shareholding with the sovereign government. Madeira Knowledge City, this long before our government established Dubai Internet City. Then, create a Singapore government. Singapore government, why? The most, one of the most ethical, astute, corporate governance countries in the world with the best education system, very humanitarian, there is, you have there, uh, Indian origin, because 70% are Indian, uh, Chinese origin. We are ex exemplary society. Very humble, working very hard. Don't start it with one company. 50-50 with Tomasek Holding. It's audacious, but it worked. In no time, we had four companies with the Singapore government sovereign wealth fund. And they were all great companies. And because of their expertise, because I was actually so proud and reverent to their capabilities, we succeeded. Why? We joined forces to complement synergies, to boost with mutual support, we boosted our, our market prospects for mutual growth and were very successful. Then, other Singapore business people were impressed. What more credentials do you need to be a partner of Singapore or Singapore's Thomasic Holding? So Do I had Dr. Sheikha, I'm yeah. really sorry to interrupt. We could listen to her for hours, and I would love to on another occasion. Uh, but um, we have so many lessons to learn uh, from Dr. Sheikha, uh, and certainly the examples of uh, the Ministry of Happiness, the Ministry of Tolerance. Don't we all need? such posts all across the world. Thank you. Our next panelist is uh, Ms. Canan Özsoy, President and CEO of GE Turkey. Ms. Canan is um, also serving on the boards of several NGOs. She has an impressive career which started as a dentist and continued with international marketing and sales roles in the pharmaceutical, pharmaceutical sector for 18 years. In the last nine years, she held various international positions with GE, including global CMO for GE Healthcare, and since 2012, leading GE's growth in Turkey. As I know, uh, Ms. Janan is also the global leader for GE Women's Network, so I would like to ask her to share more about this initiative uh, and why GE started this in the first place and uh, some other good corporate practices that we can all learn from GE. And if we have time, some results to date, please. Ibru Hanım, thank you very much for inviting me to this panel. It's a great honor to speak together with such esteemed women 
and men that I also know very well. It's wonderful to be at uh, UIP 7th Summit and I'd like to talk very briefly on a topic that is very near and dear to my heart. We inhabit this world together, roughly 50% men, 50% women. Yet, one of the main problems in front of global sustainable growth is gender inequality. Inequality of opportunity for education, for access to work, a right to work, at payroll, having equal pay for the equal job, opportunities for promotion, etc. One of the things I learned being a professional business person in one of the world's biggest and most successful companies is that it's all about sustainable business results. And if you can relate any issue that is not only near to your brain, but also to your heart, there is a solution. So lots of studies show that at workplace and at governance, at public, if equal amount of men and women work together, there is better profitability, there is better sustainability, there is better growth. So that is how at the end of 90s, my company, a 140 year old industrial giant, has discovered that something is wrong. When we look at how GE hires entry level workforce, it is a mandate, it was and it still is, that at the final slate you need to have at least one woman candidate. So as a result of this policy over the years, at entry level jobs over the world, 197 countries, we have 50-50, 40-60, 45-65, -50, whatever. So we start together in GE. And GE's heart and mind is in gender equality. But when we look at the result at the end of a career, at the very top of the management of the company, at the board, at the executive committee, at officers level, this drops down to 10% at the time. So that's why a group of four women under Jack Welsh's leadership came together and looked at it. What happens to the pipeline of talent? What happens? It was very well uh, summarized by speakers before me. Life happens, husband happens, children happen, taking care of the elderly and the sick in the family happens, culture happens, lots of things happen. And women, based also on their nature, stand aside, step aside, step back, stay back. So we thought that there needs to be a program, a networking, a culture within the company that will drive forward more women, that would work on internal rules of flexible working, of support, and of creating role models and programs. We provide coaching, mentoring, we provide affinity groups, women in commercial, women in engineering, women in manufacturing, women in engineering. And we do many things together with these ladies to make sure that we get better results for sustainability, for growth, and for profitability. Now, when we look at World Economic Forum's 2016 report, we see that if the current trend, if the current rate stays the same, equality in the workplace will happen in 93 years. I am right now 53 years old. I need to live 146 years to be able to see that. And unfortunately, in my beautiful country that you are our guests of, it will take 170 years. So that, mean, that means I have to be 223 years old to see equality in workplace, in education. This is grave. It's funny. It makes me laugh too sometimes, but it is grave. So it tells me that even if General Electric Company globally and in Turkey has beautiful programs to support women, women empowerment, 
women equality, it is not going to mean very much. We need to make sure that there is equal participation in economic life by women. For every 50 men that has a job, there needs to be 50 women that have another similar job at the same pay. We need to increase and improve policies, not only in the private sector. She and I